Good morning, folks. I'm Martin Zender. This is the Crack of Dawn Report. And since I am Martin Zender, I often wake up in the morning and asking myself, Oh my God, where are the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah? They're dead. They don't exist. I happen to know a deep secret about death. Actually, it's not really a secret. Everybody should know it, but few people do. It's found in Ecclesiastes 9, verse 5. The dead do not know anything. They don't even know they're dead. We all know about Sodom and Gomorrah, right? They were utterly destroyed. Why? Because they were a bunch of no good rotten sinners. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and the valley and all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. So my question to you this morning is, how destroyed is utterly destroyed? I even get mainstream Christians to admit this, that the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah still have to stand at the great white throne to be judged, right? There's a judgment coming, right? So how destroyed are they? I mean, the fire and the brimstone came down, utterly destroyed. Uh, but how destroyed are they when they stand up later at the great white throne? Huh, maybe destruction isn't as final as we think it is. Listen to this, Ezekiel 16, 53. Nevertheless, I will restore their captivity. Whose captivity? The captivity of Sodom and her daughters. You know, it's interesting, there's a similar people that were destroyed, the people of Moab back in Ezekiel 48. And, um, you know, most people love the destruction verses, but they really don't want to hear about the restoration verses. But God loses so that he can find. Not everybody likes to hear that, especially preachers. My brothers and sisters, I am here to talk to you today about Moab. Moab was completely destroyed, like under the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Those sinning, wretched people of Sodom and Gomorrah who will be suffering the eternal judgment of God. I love Jeremiah chapter 48. I love it because it's in the Old Testament. I love the Old Testament because of the judgment in the Old Testament. I love that God is judging people. I almost can say I like judgment more than grace. I can't get out of the Old Testament because if I did, I might have to go to the New Testament and I might have to go to the letters of Paul. And if I went to the letters of Paul, I might find that sin no longer stands between man and God. And if sin no longer stands between man and God, then I'm out of a job. I make a living out of condemning people and challenging people to quit sinning. And if you write me, I will tell you how you can quit sinning for God. Can I hear an amen? Why aren't there any people here? No, I don't really want to know. Shut up. I'm going to talk about Moab. Jeremiah 48, Moab was utterly destroyed. I'm going to skip the early verses of Jeremiah 48. I hate to do it because there's so much of death uh, and the destruction. Uh, I'm going to go directly to Jeremiah 48, 15. Moab has been destroyed. Is there anything you people don't understand about the word destroyed? about the word destruction. Thank you for showing up, Mama. You're the only person here and I appreciate it. You brought me into this world and because of you, salvation has come to the world. Verse 25, the horn of Moab has been cut off. Oh, it gets better, my beloved. Verse 35, and I shall make an end of Moab, declares the Lord, an end of Moab. Oh, beloved, and I do love verse 39. Please read with me verse 39 of Jeremiah 48. How shattered it is. Moab is shattered and utterly destroyed according to the word of the Lord in Jeremiah chapter 48. The only thing I love better than verse 39 is verse 42. Can I hear an amen? Mama? All right, it doesn't, all right, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Verse 42, and Moab will be destroyed from being a people. Read it on your own, people. And you out on TV laying across the nation and around the world, read it on your own. Jeremiah verses 1 through 46. 
because in verses 1 through 46 you will read of the total judgment of God, of the destruction of God, and Moab will be cut off, and the people will be cut off from Moab, thus saith the Lord. What about verse 47? What'd you say, Mama? What about verse 47? Oh, Mama, you don't want... What about verse 47? Yes, you're right, there is verse 47, Mama, but you don't want me to read verse 47, Mama. What about verse 47? Mama, don't make me read verse 47. I know there's one... What about verse 47? I know there's one more verse, Mama, but I don't want to read it. What are you trying to do to me? The very womb that bore me has turned against me, O oh Lord. All right, Mama, I do it for you. I only do this for you, Mama. You're going to ruin my ministry of death and condemnation, but I'm going to read it for you, Mama. Verse 47. I regret having to do this, but my mama told me to do it, so I got to do it. Yet I will restore the fortunes of Moab in the latter days, declares the Lord. Yet I will, yet I will restore the fortunes of Moab. I don't even know if I'm gonna send you a Mother's Day card. You made me read a verse of restoration. You made me read a verse of hope and peace. You let this whole congregation realize, even though there ain't no congregation, you made them realize that destruction is not the end of God's program and that which he has utterly destroyed, he can restore, Mama. Oh, Mama. Oh, you, Mama. Mama. Oh, Mama. Great Mama, what do you want me to do now? Go back to farming? I say it the Lord. This has been Martin Zender at the Crack of Dawn Report. Thanks for joining me, and we will see you in two weeks. Why aren't there any people here?